chapter 27. Tessa! Dick hissed. Stop! Don't say that! The general's face, which had seemed so open and almost kindly a moment ago, hardened into a rock-like expression. You're as crazy as he is, he said. Not me, Dex said. You let me go. I'll slip back underground. You won't hear anything else from me. Tessa whirled on Dex. How can you say that, she asked. Don't you, want to, don't you want answers? Don't you want the truth? Don't you want to know what any of this means? No, Dex muttered. I've seen enough truth to last my whole life. I deserve answers, Gideon said, standing up. No more lies. What's really going on here? Why doesn't the war zone look like the satellite footage? Why don't the bombs fall when you say they're going to? What happened out there? Delusional, the gen general muttered. Irrational. All three of them are out of their minds. He must have tapped some control underneath his desk because suddenly two doors opened behind him. Lines of officials in dark blue uniforms streamed in. You call out the psych squad? Gideon asked, sounding incredulous. But we're not crazy. We're telling the truth. We saw too much, Deck mumbled. We saw too much. One of the dark uniformed officials advanced toward Gideon with a syringe in his outstretched hand. Gideon stood frozen until the needle of the syringe was almost level with his arm. Then suddenly he whirled to the side and kicked the syringe out of the man's hand. He grabbed the man's arm and twisted it around. In seconds, he had the man squirming helplessly in a chokehold. Now, now, the general said soothingly. You taught me that, Gideon snarled. The only thing I learned in the military was how to fight. The other men swarmed Gideon, but Gideon held the hand out warningly. Stay away, he commanded them. You get too close, I'll choke him to death. I will. What's one more death on my conscience? The dark uniformed men seemed uncertain, like they needed time to think about that one. Gideon was already backing toward one of the open doors. Tessa, Deck, come on, he shouted. Deck grabbed the huge glass of jar of cigars off the de general's desk. Somehow I feel like I need a weapon too, she said. Put that down, the general commanded. That's thousands of dollars of the best cigars in the world. Okay, Deck said and she smashed the jar over the general's head. He slumped forward. All the uniformed men crowded around him. Sir, sir, they shouted. Then they began yelling at each other. Check his pulse. Check his pupil dilation. Is he okay? Tessa didn't stay to find out. She ran after Gideon and Deck. They were in a small antechamber now. Gideon snatched and opened a closet and shoved the man he'd been holding inside. Then he slammed the door and propped a chair against it. They'll hear you screaming when you come to, and they'll rescue you, Gideon said. Tessa realized that the man had passed out. From fright? Because Gideon had nearly choked him? Tessa didn't know. This way, Deck yelled, and Tessa was right behind her, dashing out into a maze of hallways like the one they'd come through before. They'll catch us, Tessa panted. They'll call out an alarm. They'll, they'll see us on camera. But the halls were deserted. They still had time. Gideon led the way, darting around one corner after another, always seeming to know which way to go. Maybe all the people who are supposed to be watching the security tapes are out on their coffee breaks, Tessa thought. Maybe the cameras aren't spread out through the whole headquarters. Maybe the psych squad is too busy taking care of the general to call out the alarm yet. They kept running, Gideon in the lead, Deck behind him, and Tessa bringing up the rear. Tessa hated being at the back. She kept glancing around every time they turned, just in case someone was catching up with them. And then she glanced down an intersecting hall as they passed and saw a man in a light blue uniform. He was turning toward her. There wasn't time to get out of the way. And then, just a second before he would have seen her, he suddenly reversed course and turned in the opposite direction. Coming, he called to someone in the, the other hallway. Tessa scrambled to the next corner, her heart pounding fast. Deck and Gideon were several steps ahead of her, and she should have rushed after them. But she couldn't go on without knowing what lay around that corner. There could be dozens of officers running right toward her now. She wanted some warning. Very, very cautiously, she twisted her neck and peeked down the intersecting hall. She dared only to let the smallest possible portion of her face show. She looked with only one eye. Every, officials were streaming down the intersecting hall, several yards away. They were obviously searching for something. But each time they should have looked down the hall toward Tessa, would very likely have spotted Tessa, something drew their attention away. A shout, a crackling walkie-talkie. A command barked from further up the line. Not a single person broke off and headed toward Tessa and Gideon and Deck. Tessa squinted, confused. It didn't make sense. She pulled back out of sight, looked toward Gideon and Deck. They were far ahead of her now. She dashed after them. Guys, she hissed. Wait, listen. By the time she'd caught up to them, her brain had re-examined the sight of the stampeding men and the sight of the blessedly empty hall she was in right now. And she had a completely different question to ask. 
that she had originally intended. What does it mean? She began stopping to draw an air that stabbed at her aching, exhausted lungs. She tried again. What does it mean that they're, they seem to be letting us get away? <laughs>